You know, Abe, few people know this, but it was uh, traditionally true at our old place of employment, correct, mm-hmm. for us to refer to our superiors as Sifus. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you remember that. Uh, because another little known fact was uh, I was technically Abe's supervisor at Cracked, uh, which means I I miss being called Sifu by Abe. <laughs> Abe, will you call right. me Sifu this no, entire episode? No, I'm not, because they're not paying me to. So uh, That's fair. You know. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Still yeah, still, still salty about not getting paid. <laughs> I would, too. I would be salty, yeah. too. I hated calling uh, Jack Sifu, and I like Jack. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just, you know, he kept, uh, he really liked, I, t- I saw the pleasure in his eyes. You know, I was just like, nah, you shouldn't be enjoying it this much. Anyway, hey, welcome. This is Director <laughs> Peace Theater. Hey, and you actually, you want to, uh, when that game Sifu came out? Ooh, I felt I it in my bones. I, I thought, I, I read it and I didn't, I thought it was a game about the uh, the little Dustin Hoffman, uh, little fucking Kung Fu Panda, the oh, little uh, <laughs> yeah, dribble yeah, yeah. or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I thought it was a video game about that guy. Yeah. It- <laughs> what an Isn't interestingly mistaken apprehension you were under. Have you played any I- of that? Have you touched? Even no. touched that? No. Uh, it just looks hard, and I don't do very things hard. that are hard. Uh, brief. Plug- <laughs> me neither. Brief plug mm-hmm. for for this because it's on topic for today's episode. Hell yeah. uh, Sifu is a fantastic game. If anybody wants to play that, by the way, uh, <laughs> Kung Fu Panda is a great movie. <laughs> <And> also, <laughs> try karate. I don't know if you're interested in martial <laughs> arts in general. Give them a try. Anyway, I'm Adam Ganser, one of the hosts of this podcast, uh, mm-hmm. joined by I'm not afraid to call him my Padawan. Uh, oh, I'm a Padawan. <laughs> yeah, I'm a Vepperson. Yeah, the Padawan. Metaphors. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have a great haircut. We're all over the place this morning. This we is really be are fun in the bun. It, re- <laughs> it really is gonna be a blast. Uh, hey, Abe, this movie, yeah. uh-huh. uh, which I will gently call Yeep Man, mm-hmm. and okay, uh, yeah. forgive me if I mispronounce it. That's uh, my understanding. Yeah, that's my understanding too. Uh, this movie, I had never watched it before two days ago. Uh, yeah, and I, I got really you liked good. it. I got you good. You did, yeah, yeah. I really like, yeah. Because when did you watch this? When it first came out? Did you see it in the theater? Uh, no, not no. I didn't watch it in theaters. Uh, probably 2012 or something like so that. Early. It came on 2008, so I probably yeah. caught it a few years after when the hype was like the highest. Um, I was both yeah. thrilled and then thrilled again to see, like, before I watched it, I was thrilled just seeing it the first time, that there mm-hmm. are sequels. And then after I'd watched the movie, it was Did like, you watch oh it? my God, there's sequels to this? Yeah, like, yeah, what is yeah, that? Yeah, that's the best. And if yeah. you haven't seen it, It Man 2 also slaps. I bet it also does. Also slaps. You should watch that I bet one. It, it slaps equally, if not more so, depending on what your interest is in watching uh, It Man. There's four of them. There's yeah, just and four. they get not good. And oh, guess sure. what? You want to hear something crazy? I've, I've, you know I do. You want to know who's in the... I think the fourth one? See, I, maybe it's the third one. But Please. there is... Mike Tyson. <laughs> no! Yeah, dude. No, wait. So there was one in 2021. Is that the one you're talking about? The Awakening? Yeet Man, The Awakening? That one I haven't even seen. Because okay. they, got, they got like really eh at a certain yeah, point. Sure, but right. that's... This isn't taste peace theater <laughs> right right well i i think uh both you and i have a have a soft passion for uh kung fu movies right or, or yeah. martial arts films in general big fan yeah. well because they're so uh there's such a different skill set to make than you know like a your traditional comedy or your drama mm-hmm. or whatever like there's a whole different set of things that you have to be thinking about uh mm-hmm. as a filmmaker so I was thrilled that you're boldly venturing into this these troubled waters, sir. So bold. And really? I, may I say, from one bearded man to another, oh, uh, it's it's uh, <laughs> we're weebs, dude. <laughs> Total weebs. <laughs> uh, you love that. You love it so yeah. much. You love. Yeah, pointing I like that to out. make fun of. I love to point it out. You love pointing out weebs. That's your favorite thing. Uh, Dude, you see a weeb on the street, you point at him. You point at him. You say, that's what you are. And they go, that's right. Weeb, (laughs) have a great day. And they nod at you, and uh, it's like a samurai bow. Yeah, exactly. They're like, why are you being, it seems derogatory. And I'm like, (laughs) but it's not. (laughs) Just calls him like I sees him. It's not a good thing. Are you denying it? And he's like, I'm not denying it. (laughs) Fair enough. Identity shame, no. 
no, no, unless no, they're no. you know no. weeps. <laughs> All right, I'm done with the bit. <laughs> Uh, well, no, it's I'm, a good I'm not movie. sure if we're ever going to be done with it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this really was a good movie. I was, uh, I was surprised by it. it's. It's very. Um, well, it's great about. It's great in the way a lot of kung fu movies are, which is when it does kung fu, it's awesome. Mm-hmm. And uh, when it doesn't do kung fu, it kind of jumps around in tone a bit, and mm-hmm. that is also a thing I like about like traditional kung fu movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, would you disagree with that? I, I feel like that's a pretty no. Yeah, no. I think yeah. I think that there one could argue that it's like a there's a cultural split in terms of approach to story. Um, yes, and absolutely. we're used to the Western kind of. It goes like this, you know, the hero's journey mostly. Yeah, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major live, and uh, <laughs> with it, it with martial arts film they're like i don't know what you're talking about this is how it goes and it's usually formally you can see it like you can map it out structurally a lot of martial arts films are like a bell curve right everything's a yeah. bell curve but yeah, like that's right it only picks the top it only it picks a different section than the than uh western films because it's usually like two ba- there's three acts but it's like two basic acts and the acts are like if take Drunken Master for example, it's mm-hmm. like Jackie Chan is a big piece of shit for like half the movie, right? And then he suddenly becomes then like, he gets good because yeah. Nirvana is like an instance, right. I think, in a lot of these uh, portrayals. And so it's like, and as soon as that happens, he goes, you know, goes to town on yeah, some he goes full drunk. Jackie Chan, full yeah, Jackie and- Chan. A lot of, uh, I don't know, a lot of, formally I just find that interesting, mm-hmm. but I'm a nerd, so. No, no, it's a, that's a thing that uh, I've actually, believe it or not, had a long discussion with uh, other uh, instructors at the school I teach about how to teach film structure to students. Because mm-hmm. if they have watched foreign films, especially like kung fu movies and others, they'll be like, wait, the hero's journey doesn't totally track. And it's like, yeah, yeah, that's right. This is really more of a Western Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not exclusively Western, and it's not exclusively absent from heroes from uh, kung yeah. fu movies. But and we get used to it. There's it new structures, right? Yeah, we, exactly. We go like it's not that thing. I don't like it, and I think it's one of the things that keeps. I mean, it's just a basic human thing, right? That keeps us from some of us from enjoying all of the uh, international movies. Um, it's true. Maybe it's just not your bag, but I, you know, that that's one of the allures of international movies to me. Well, like you know. one interesting thing about this movie, and I have a feeling it's gonna connect to your argument a little bit, is that our character, our titular Yeep Man, uh, who is the the protagonist of the story, never gets better at kung fu. No, he's, he's just always. He awesome. just starts amazing and remains amazing the entire <laughs> That's right. time, and it's That's delightful. Right. It's truly delightful. Yeah, it's uh, if. You haven't seen it. I don't know why you would have seen this anime and then not have seen uh, this movie. But if there's a anime right now called One Punch Man. Oh, that's cool. It man uh, behaves based on the same rules. One Punch Man is like a comedy where he's like, I want to fight someone who's like strong, but everyone I punch, they're dead after one punch. Uh, uh, the and that's the joke. Being too the great. Yes. Too, he's like, I'm too strong. And it man is just like, I just want to teach and be a good guy. And all these motherfuckers keep coming at me. So it's kind of the same situation. Well, um, Abe, if it, just because I know it will thrill you and then I'll get mm-hmm. out of your way. Uh, mm-hmm. I, you should know that I needed to take Taekwondo to oh, really? graduate from college at my stupid college that I went to. That is awesome. Yes. And... Uh, they what a told, waste of money. It was such a waste of money. I'm horrible at it. I was never good. Uh, and the first thing they teach you in Taekwondo, or this, the first thing I learned in this class, I guess I'll say, mm-hmm. is that the purpose of martial arts is uh, to not have to use them. Right. Uh, and they teach it in this like story where it's like every right. year this guy who's like learning, who's a black belt in karate is going through a park and he gets robbed by this robber. And like each year mm-hmm. he gets better and better at karate and gets worse and worse. And I'm saying karate because they told it, they, they told this story as a karate lesson, but it was applied to Taekwondo. Uh, and he gets better and better and he keeps beating the hell out of this poor robber who never learns. <laughs> And keeps trying to rob him. And then finally he becomes like this grandmaster black belt or whatever. And Mm -hmm. uh, the robber jumps out at him and he just hands him his wallet and says, I would rather you have this than 
receive the amount of pain that I'm going to inflict on you. Oh, that's badass. Is it so good? Uh, Yeah. And I I remember Ready your gods. Tell your gods to pray. (laughs) Uh, That's right. But I feel like, interestingly enough about this movie, that's where we start. Is like, he's that guy. The It Man is exactly like the robber in your story. (laughs) Yes. Exactly. No, I mean... Well, I mean, no. No, the opposite. But... The opposite, yeah. but I mean, it's just because he's always winning. Um, yeah, and I want to say it wasn't a big waste of time for like Taekwondo is not a big waste of time. I want to make that clear. I just wanted, I want to just give the caveat: it Adam taking Taekwondo is a big waste, of a time. humongous <laughs> waste of time. Other than for comedy value, had anyone yeah. recorded it, they didn't. Here's another fact about it, Abe, just to get it over uh, with: we didn't uh, have pads because they were just starting out teaching Taekwondo. Look, awesome. Perfect. And I accidentally, so people in. Yep. I accidentally hit a man full speed in the jaw with a roundhouse kick. Yep, because he tried to j- like jump in on me, and yeah. I was telegraphing <laughs> it, and I'm t- like, it clicked, like the jaw clicked. Yeah, you it know? hit. Yeah, and he was not, like down, and it was a bummer. <laughs> it was a not, bummer. He was very much hurt. Yes. not as much as not if you actually knew how to do taekwondo. Right. Exactly. But like he was fine. But you it, kicked a man. <laughs> it was really bad. Uh, really yeah, bad. Yeah, kicks, anyway. uh, kicks are for real. I did not yeah, enjoy it I at found. all. I didn't think it was that's... funny later. I was like, this sucks. Uh, I wish yeah. I hadn't done this. Yeah. I've never done any type of fighting. Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah, not, not a fighter or nor a lover. <laughs> no. uh, I'm, just, I'm an observer. <laughs> I'm just Abe. I'm just Abe. Great. Uh, but hey, I have an essay. Oh yeah, let's hear it. God damn it! I I told myself I'd stop writing essays. But you love them so much. But you know, I'm a scholarly man, I guess. Uh, so very much what you were talking about, though. We were talking about a little bit of form today. But um, really, it's kind of talking more about visual language and convention and not just kung fu movies, but like action movies Um, and drawing your eye into quick edits and making you feel like that sequence is pleasurable and understandable and geographically makes sense. And you don't so you don't think about it and you just kind of run with the thing. And so I think that how we've gotten so good at it and people have tried many things there, you know, martial arts films have their longstanding tradition of their own, you know, convention action movies in the States, the same. And like, I don't know, like French, French people don't really make action movies. I'm sorry, Luc Besson. Uh, (laughs) But, you know, I'm just trying to say everyone does it kind of different. And, um, I think that that's because we have built over time a syntax of shots that cut together when we, whether or not like the audience notices it or not. Um, they're usually basically just done to like, oh yeah, I like how that looks to my eyes. So that flow is good. Let's do that again. And then other filmmakers watch, you know, and go, oh yeah, that's good. And they basically, we found the rules. There's, we try to distract from it. And sometimes it's really cool. And other times it's born identity. Um, but yeah, screen direction is how that's possible. And a lot of people are like, what's, I don't know. I get kind of probably what screen direction is, but like, if you're just an audience member, how does it, why does it matter? It's like the structure that holds up a film that you're never intended to consider at all as a meaningful thing. I can't think of a single film where they wanted you to think about it. So what do I mean when I say screen direction? So think about a car driving at you and you hold a camera, right? You pan with the camera as it whips from the left, whips by, and then you track it as it moves to the right. So you you have moved the camera in a direction, right? And this is like the simplest way to maintain screen direction in a single shot. There's many ways to do it. You can cut it up and all that. But... Like, even if you had a bunch of cameras and edit together, you'd want to build the expectation that things are going left to right. And that's maintaining screen direction. Now, let's say a new problem arises when you add a second car, right? Let's say they're coming at each other right now. They're like, they're going to crash or something like that. So how do you shoot that? Well, you probably do the same, right? You shoot the same, the first car the same way. But now you add a bunch more cameras meant to follow the new car going from right to left, right? So, so that the audience expects a collision, easy stuff. 
Um, there's way that's just the basics of like how screen direction is maintained and how the illusion is basically uh, in your brain because yeah. of convention. And uh, I think that a lot of filmmakers do interesting stuff with screen direction to play with those expectations. Or they build systems of like home where you feel like this is how it should be. And then they can break it later and say, this doesn't feel right. Um, for example, so like I'll ask to you, Adam. Sure. What's your favorite, like, can you think of a good a movie that you were like, oh, I respect how the screen direction was used in that movie. So like, just as another example, so I, it's not all me. I gave you an example when we were talking about this offline, which was Ratatouille. But Ratatouille, it, it, actually what it does is it never makes you think about things traveling. Because like it'll cut between shots, right? And mm-hmm. they'll keep your eye on the same part of the frame. So that you never get Mm. confused about where you are geographically, even when they're doing montages and stuff, which is a different thing than screen direction. Um, Mm -hmm. They call that continuity of eye movement, which is a different thing. Right. And it just now occurred to me, actually, Raiders of the Lost Ark is a really good movie for screen direction. Oh, Raiders is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if you think of that chase sequence right up top, right? The chase sequence Mm -hmm. right up top is a perfect illustration of of, uh, screen direction. Because mm-hmm. Spielberg is constantly doing exactly the uh, example that you just listed out, but instead of cars, it's Indiana Jones running through the jungle or through a trap or whatever. Mm-hmm. And everything is left to right too. Everything. Yeah, he does a lot it's of that. It's just yes. getting into it and getting out of it. It's like it's he does that a lot. He does this little wrap around. He does it with the uh, the di- the the raptors in Jurassic Park as well. Yep. in the kitchen scene. He's so good at it. Um, he. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's one of his many. Tremendous talent. Uh, I think the thing you can gain from the Indiana Jones example specifically is if you think about that chase scene with the natives, like right up top when he's handed over the idol to Belloc, uh, mm-hmm. They So Spielberg actually has a series of repetitive shots that establish screen direction. And they're not always traveling the same, like they're not always going the same actual direction from left to right or right to left. But what he'll do is he'll have Indiana Jones, he's running to the left. And then here's a closer of him running to the left. And then they'll cut to the same shot of the natives. They're running to the left. Here's Mm -hmm. a closer. They're running to the left. Mm -hmm. Then Indiana runs to the right and they pass a statue. Then the natives run to to the right and we'll see the statue, but bats fly out of its mouth. You know, just stuff Mm -hmm. like that that tell us we we understand it intuitively these people are all traveling the same direction and they're chasing each other and you don't think anything yep. about it uh because it's done yep. artfully and there's many ways to do that it's not just left to right right to left it's also size of frame yes width of frame distance from subject these are things that give you is do i see the world or is it a close up one obviously shows um geography better than the other how often do you deploy it in the edit uh so it takes multiple disciplines but in the end i think it's yeah both good examples um especially with ratatouille and its Mm eyeline uh because you have the rat has an eyeline and he has an eyeline and he's driving the man (laughs) well there's a lot of jumping around in that movie uh ratatouille Uh, there's there's more than one montage if i remember it correctly and the montage covers a lot of space and people and uh, you're never also to mimic the but like the chaos of a uh kitchen things coming at you from the left from the right he's overwhelmed correct so um the camera like pushes and dollies and pans around to uh you know to make ratatouille man's life you know hell Mm -hmm. um Great stuff. And it's all subconscious is what I'd argue because you don't really need to notice it. But it's kind of cool when you do watch films and you have this kind of stuff in your brain. I found that the the moment that I stopped being like a watcher and started being a filmmaker, it's right. like this stuff you start to look for. It's actually really cool because what it does is it makes you go, oh, this is a good movie. <laughs> you know, right. Like, that's right like i can tell why this is a good movie it made me do this it made me feel this way why because it did these things um now that isn't necessary for everyone i'm not saying everyone go become a filmmaker in fact no stop everyone stop being a filmmaker (laughs) we're done we're all full uh 
So yeah, the way this basically works and to get more in basics, and this might be just, you know, 30 seconds of a little bit more boring, but I think it's important in case someone's coming to this completely blind is going back to the cars example. Where do you place that second camera? How do you maintain that second car? How do you do the collision? I set up a convention, which is one car's coming left to right, the other's coming right to left. So you implied collision. That's traditional, right? Mm -hmm. You ask yourself, why do I have to do that? Why all these other questions, you know, and it's only because we through time have decided this is what looks good. Uh, You can fuck with that. But there's this convention that we created called the 180 line, which most of you probably know what that is. For those that don't, real quick, j- like draw a quick, uh, quickest like straight line between the two cars, like directly to them. Don't even think about camera. Now you have split the world in half: one side of the cars, the other side of the cars. You can put a camera on one side or another at that point, right? If you were starting shooting a scene, the 180 line rule says pick a side, and all cameras go to that side. Now, they say this because it gels with the audience's expectation of where the car is, like, approaching. And this is basically all scenes ever. Replace the cars with people talking at a table or fighting on a table. It's the same deal. Some fancy filmmakers break this convention to basically signal to the viewer, uh, like, what just happened or something just really occurred that I should pay attention. That's true. Because it was jarring. Or for other reasons. But the rule exists because the audience expects it. It helps them feel that they're geographically grounded. Uh, yes. But there are, like, so a very famous example of this being broken is The Dark Knight. Uh, Christopher Nolan uses breaking the 180 line all the time to establish emphasis. Uh, like, so if you want to go back and watch, like, say, the Joker scene with uh, Batman where... Uh, where he's trying to find out where Rachel is, and the Joker's like, there's nothing you can threaten me with, right? That whole scene. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. They jump the 180 line a bunch in it to establish that the Joker is winning the argument. Uh, And it's really well done if you want to see a filmmaker using this technique for uh, for meaning. And that's great, because It Man does exactly the same thing. In fact, it builds a system over the entire movie. Mm. Um, I posit that all action movies and martial art films that like kick ass, r- they rule because they obey the rules that I just talked about. And they, it's because they build a sense of momentum and momentum is fun. So things coming to a point, drifting away for it, from, from it, coming back to it, tracking all of that in your brain, you become along for the ride. And that's great. And what and one of those movies, obviously, I think that I, you should check out is 2008's It Man. The fights rule for many reasons, but I think it's because we're totally transported in the action than most modern action movies and even other martial arts films. I think John Wick, for example, does this too. If you like John Wick, for the most part, it's it's a lot tougher with guns because when you fire a gun in one shot, when it cuts to what gets hit, the momentum is a little bit lost. So you have yeah. to build it with like camera and other things. Whereas, you know, in It Man, you can use fists and it's like, oh, shit, you know, like it's a little bit more hands on, so to speak. But also, I think the thing that makes John Wick so good is that they often don't cut for bullet impacts. They also did. Yeah, they just let it play out because they did the stunts. And that is also what martial arts films do. Yep. Which is really funny because like there's an every frame of painting. Absolutely. Talks about Jackie Chan. It's great. Yeah. Talks about creating visual comedy, but also visual like his visual approach to uh, how he does like stunts and he stays very wide. And the reason why is because he wants to really prove that they went out and did it for real. John Wick does the same thing. This movie doesn't. And that's why I kind of picked this movie Mm -hmm. because it's kind of, um, it's kind of like the odd man out. Like there's not, there's other movies like the protector and on Bach that don't necessarily always play it in the wide or like the raid redemption. But it's like an updated those, traditional kung It's like an updated westernized yeah. kind of camera move kind of thing yeah. that was like, oh, yeah, you can build momentum in different ways. And I was like, all right, how does that mesh well with a martial arts film, like a traditional martial arts film? Uh, and it, it's awesome. So let's talk about that. Uh, there's like, like 11 fights in the movie. And the first movie, the first fight happens six minutes into the movie. And we see a fight between Ip Man and uh, and Master Lao. And the subtext is that they're sparring in private to not alarm the masses of like who fights better. It's like a private duel. 
it's it man no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's super it's it man, <laughs> it's it, man. Uh, in order to do this they introduce uh, introduce another character Yuan who's basically searching for his lost kite and he sees he peeks through a window and so the setup's these three characters two in a fight one watching with one guy outside the camera kind of glides with the momentum in the fight as it moves left right to left and it's uh to make the normally static shot of just a guy in a like near a tree feel more like he's in the fight that's like pretty basic stuff but it's maintaining momentum Hmm. um i'd probably shoot this i don't know about you i'd probably shoot that shot of him with like a crane and have the action like tell the actor to act shocked and then approach him from the left and then do it again and then approach him from the right and do it again and then I'd be like, okay, we need you being mesmerized by all their fighting. Uh, all right, approach it from the left. All right, do it again. Approach it from the right. Do it again. Left, right, left, right. You know, like, like that you just knock it way. all out. You, you, like, that's what you, you just mean. just knock it all yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's like, how do you... I just wanted to put that in people's brains of sometimes the director has to think about, like, how is this going to work for the edit when they shoot it? Absolutely. And it's not chronologically. Because then you're going to realize how hard Wilson Yip's job was as the director of it man he he did all this shit for all the fights so yeah okay i mean so the fight it is really hard like like i don't it's like, really hard i i did a three minute short for correct called uh what do we call it monday in action Heroes. i don't know what it's called on youtube but it was basically mm. like a an extended edgar wright sequence which is not exactly a fight scene but it's uh, related and like dealing with screen direction is like you're you're thinking about it all day. And it's even yeah. worse with a with a kung fu movie where like people are getting whipped around and 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 like the screen direction's getting changed by where they end up in the frame all the time. So it's tough. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Forgive me for interrupting. Not at all. Yeah. Uh I think Edgar Wright's actually really good at screen yes, he direction. Is. Very good at um, it. Especially with his montages mm-hmm. and the comedy bits, like he understand it is not an Edgar Wright podcast. Uh, the this fight though is like pretty. It's 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 a slightly more complex beast than just like a guy watching from a tree or near a tree. Yip Man is always fighting from the right side. Uh, the right side of Lau the right side of the, the frame. Left. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's it. he's always he's camera direction when he is on an offensive is going from right to left. Interesting, right? Yeah, he's on the right side and he's coming at you, and you are and if you who's you know Lau in this situation is on the left, and if Lau is coming at you, he's coming at you from the left. So in kung fu, there's subtle little moves, and there's where we place the camera that kind of exaggerate these these uh, these beats, but because we're anchored by Yuan's perspective from the outside, everything is kind of shot flatly for this sequence. And it's our first sequence. So he's like kind of, it's the first step in his system. Because he sees these two fighters from a distance. So there's not a ton of drastic screen direction. I think it's because we're just getting a little taste of yeah. it, man. You know, like it's just like, uh, he's aw- it's awesome, right? That, what we, that fight is awesome. But it can get awesomer. It's also you know? very like that's a very traditional way of watching a kung fu fight. Like it's like a flat fifty mm-hmm. fifty, almost like a like a video game screen where you're on one side and the other guy's on the other, and it's like you know now we fight right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I think it's interesting that this is the beginning of his. It's choices. the beginning, yeah, yeah. And so what is so what does Wilson Yip do in this? Well, he wants what does he want to serve with the beat? He wants to prove here's a guy and they're having like a gentleman's duel. Here's a guy who thinks he can take on it man. And it man is like, we don't know anything about it man at this point. Uh, other than he has like a family and uh, the drama of the movie, which I won't be really getting into other than there's parallel beats with the fights. Um, but, All it needs to establish is he kicks ass. He can beat this guy. And he can dominate. So it's kind of a one-sided fight. So all you really need to remember in when you watch this fight, you'll notice that the right side attack dominates the whole time. There's one bit where Lau comes at him, but he totally whiffs as soon as it happens. So screen direction just bails on him and pops back to that wide. Um, and it's basically mute. It's a mute button for his uh, approach. And then everything else is just right side. The guy's pushing him left, pushing him left. Uh, and the camera does so. Um, and so that and that proves that it's like a one sided battle. 
basically mm. it man dominates and it's right side dominated left remember that the second fight we introduce a new character kam shan chow who's like He's threatening the integrity of Kung, the Kung Fu collective of the town is basically Yeah, he's story. like an outsider he's, who's like, I'm going to try yeah. all the Kung Fu out and you show them all. You guys all suck, yeah. yeah. So, and he's he's actually better than everyone. Yeah. Like, so we need a fight that shows that he kicks ass, right? So Rulebook says, what does he do? Right dominates left again. Mm. We shoot it flatly again. It's basically the first fight, camera-wise, it's identical. It's identical. Interesting. It's Right side, right side, beat left side. There's no back and forth. So now I want to talk about why is that important and why did this make me go, huh? Because the third fight comes along. But before that, I want to talk about the third fight in, in detail. I want to mention that Wilson Yip gives us this cool visual system in this movie that I noticed. Doesn't really matter to any individual fight because someone can be on the left, someone can be on the right, doesn't really matter. But he wants to keep it feeling like a dance and he wants to set up your expectation is what I think. So every fight has a simple narrative right from here on in. It man attacks and succeeds or whoever we're rooting for attacks and succeeds or like whoever's going to win. I should say, usually they surprise their opponent because the opponent's like, Oh shit, he's good. So we go let right to left or left to right, depending on where they start. Right. But it's it man attacks and succeeds. And then his opponent fights back and seems to actually get an upper hand. And then we see a switch in the screen direction again. And it man slowly takes back control and wins. Or the person who's going to win wins. And it always is that. It's three different screen direction changes. Every fight, every fight works this way, basically. Except the ones that I just talked about. Where they were meant to show that it man and calm can dunk on any form. Yeah, they're one-sided so for fights. That, Interesting. Mm-hmm. So for that, there's no change in movement during the fight, and screen uh, direction and momentum are entirely one away, and there's just this right dominates left momentum. Even when Lao fights back, as I mentioned, he totally whiffs, and you can just, yeah, we're just back to right dominating left again. So let's talk about that third fight. So this is where the system starts, really, because now he's set up an expectation, two points make a line. This fight is immediately after the second fight. So at this point, Calm has dunked on one ma- master. Now it's time for a second. He's like, hey, you suck. So we're, give me some other Kung Fu masters. I'm going to dunk on them. And this is where we show that uh, Calm has this tendency to lose control and not understand true like Kung Fu, right? He has to turn to the sword to beat the, this particular master. This master is good enough that Calm's like, all right, all right. I'm going to just go for lethal weapons then. Uh, That's and right. this is where we get what I'm calling. Well, I mean, it's in music. You call it a ternary form, which is ABA. Oh. Um, so formally, if we think about right to left screen direction, as in the approach of like it man or whoever's on the right dominating for a segment, that would be an A, right? The moment- yes. And in this case, in this fight, the momentum of calm coming from he starts on the right. Again, for the third fight in a row, where th- right is going to win. Uh, then we get this thing that happens where the other master launches an attack that surprises Calm. So it's briefly left going right. And then the sword is introduced and right beats left again. So A, B, A. And um, they also call this like the song form is also something uh, like... It's a, the basics of all songs, right? <laughs> like pop songs right, and stuff. Right, right, right. I just think that that's interesting because we love that. We love, oh, I'm here. Oh, I went somewhere else. Oh, I came back. Uh, and it's just the basic. Of, it's like the basic unit of form. It's like the rhythm um, of drama, like the like yeah. the rhythm of emo- <laughs> like the emotional rhythm of drama. No, it's true. It's very true. I, I can't. I'm um, not over the fact that you have observed that every single time the winner comes from the right. Is that like I'm yeah, just shocked by that? Uh, anyway, now you, sorry, I love this. Point. It is exhausting in my <laughs> being in my brain. Uh, so this also happens in the fourth fight, right? Yeah, and that's the fight where Calm takes on Lao. So w- now we know that he, we know that he can go tit for tat with someone who Ip Man beat, right? Right. So now, now what Wilson Yip, the director, is doing. 
uh, and the writers are doing is they're setting up an expectation of like, well, how good is this, you know, calm guy? Is he as good as it, man? Can he beat that guy too? Uh, and up to this point, right has always dominated left. Let's talk about, so that's four fights. Right dominates left. Let's go fifth fight. And now we got a stew going because now it's calm and it man. So everyone basically in town is like, yeah, you can beat those masters. Those are very good masters. You're very good at Kung Fu, but you can't beat it, man. It is not possible. And we start. So now we have a system going where right always dominates left. And it man starts on the left. Oh shit. The system is setting up that the right always wins. And so this doesn't look good for our man, right? No. Also, the fact that this fight takes place in like his foyer, and uh, they all just sort of reconcile to the fact they're just gonna break all oh. his shit is like what? Yeah. And his like kid comes out. Yeah. Right. It's like it's like it's a fucking great. This, this scene. is gonna go bad for uh, poor Eat Man. Exactly. And this is where you're gonna probably start saying, listener, you're like Abe. You're probably just this is circumstantial. It's just ran. They're just randomly choosing shit. I don't think so. And here's why. Here is why. So it starts. And Calm has his offensive. So as I set up, It Man's on the left. Calm's on the right. Calm's right's coming at left. We get a volley of that. And Calm breaks some stuff. And It Man's little kid comes in. And now it's personal. Well, also they do a little... coming in my house. They do a little dolly there, don't they? Like to actually switch. And they do a dolly. They switch. So now it man is on the right and and comms on the left. And then we get it man's offense like offensive. And screen direction is totally maintained. It's it just it like restarts the fight basically. And he knocks calm down and boom, we've completed another A. So we've now had two A's. If you go back to my like ABA system where A is right dominates left, right? Then calm, as we have learned goes for the sword baby to show that he's without honor and you know whatnot again and we get a flurry of b this obviously makes it man have to back up and screen and dolly and everything pushes uh left to right so we get a b uh and then it man turns it around because he grabs like a feather duster and he's like i'll fight you with nonsense uh so if you track the whole fight it's actually a a b a but in between the first and second a it man takes over the right side of the map. So we still have this other rule for me. Right always beats left. That's still how it goes. Even though he wanted to do this little thing where he's like, is it man going to lose to this guy? Cause that's what the form was building to. You have spent the entire movie so far setting up this expectation. And then you put the guy that we're like, he should win on the wrong side. So that you subconsciously kind of feel like, oh, this might not go well for him. This guy is pretty fucking good. <laughs> He's but, pretty fucking good. But here's the thing with the like, here's the thing with the like Eastern story form. It's not even half the movie yet. Right. The movie really because there's changes. a whole bunch of drama shit that's about to happen. Yeah. This whole thing that I've talked about, the first five fights out of the eleven f- fights in the movie, uh are just a preamble. They're just setting up the f- like the system. And what do we really know about the system at this point? Right that beats left. That right beats left. Uh, we also, by the way, if you don't mind, yeah. a quick observation. Oh, please. Uh, we also know that every time Eat Man beats somebody, he's going to do the awesomest flurry of punches on a chest. Oh, You've ever me. seen. It's like something Liu Kang does in Mortal Kombat, and it straight up thrills me every it's time like, he does it. Do, 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 do. It's so yeah. good because it, it's, it's satisfying. It's like, well. why? <laughs> it's so good. Just like, here's I, eight <laughs> punches. This guy can't do anything about him. Uh, it's so I love it. <laughs> As love a, it. Like, I imagine myself in like a restaurant, yeah. and I'm like... Compliments to the sound designer, sir. <laughs> exactly. Because it's tasty as fuck. The sound is really uh, good in this movie. Like, the punch sounds yeah, are it makes real it, good. That's yeah. one of the reasons it's really fucking I good. I agree. Uh, yeah. So, this is the part of the story where a bunch of shit happens. And it's... I mean, I'm going to kind of spoil it, but I'm not going to unnecessarily spoil well, it's it. It's not a spoiler. Um, it's history, mostly. It's history. Right. But it's not really important to go through for this... 
point, but because you should go watch it, man, and enjoy it yourself. But let's just say it c- creates a tectonic power shift uh, over China. <laughs> now the whole town slash China is like the underdog. And we show the shift with the 6th, 7th, and 8th fights. Uh, and you're going to see why, because we've done this all before. They're just doing it again. We get a fight, uh, we get a fight with Lao against a Japanese soldier where he comes from the left, right? He beats him. So now it's like, what? This time he's coming from the left. It's, it's a dominant B fight. This is B-A-B. I thought you said right takes over left, right? And it's because the switch that happened that you didn't realize is that it actually has to do with the plot of the movie. In this case, the weak side is left. Right. And the strong side is right. And that's not based off whose Kung Fu is better. It's based on who we're rooting for. Right. So this is dominant B fight. That's synonymous with, and he's synonymous at this point with China. So it's meant to show that the power of Chinese Kung Fu uh, is like being attacked and he's, and it's defending itself, but he's doing this, he's doing this weird switch. And that, and the reason that I, this is where I kind of noticed it because I was like, okay, so that's nonsense. Right. And then he does the next two fights uh, and it's a one way street, just like the first two um, fights we got in the movie. Where it's just B, just just dominant B. It's not even B A B, because the first fight we introduced the general, or like sorry, I should say the uh, sixth fight, seventh fight. Sorry, uh, we introduced the general, and he's the main villain of the story, and we we show how he can just dominate three dudes at once, and it's much like the fight with Calm, the second fight with Calm, and the first fight with Ip Man. Where it's just meant to prove this guy's fucking he's real good. good, yeah. And uh, he's on the right now. So the general now, the Japanese have now become the right. So Japan is now taking the A side, or you know that's another the way right of saying side. it. Oh, how I'm saying it, yeah. And in this fight, he dominates just like the previous. So fight. are you saying that like just like each fight has its own sort of rhythm? The movie itself yes. has a rhythm in the has, way the fights go. A, exactly right. And it becomes clearer as we go because now the system is off and running. He was just building the expectation. He's rebuilding it so he can break it, which is another good thing that I think good movies That's do. That's pretty good. Um, so to match the general and restore pride for the town, we get the eighth fight, which is Lao attempts to do the same. He's taking on three dudes and now he's from the left the weak side and the right takes it again he can't do what the general can he can't take on three dudes so in this world the rule of right dominance is intact but now of all of china seems to be coming from right. the left they've switched sides so far. yeah next fight ninth fight it man takes on 10 men because he hears about because his friend died so uh, so he's like, uh, I'm going to fucking just unhand all of you motherfuckers. And it's one of the coolest this fights is m- you've ever my seen. my favorite fight. Uh, it's yeah. the best. He like breaks because a dude's leg in a way that's like, oh my God. <laughs> that's so impossible. Good. That man's leg is gone. Yeah, yeah. It's a ghost yeah, leg. It's yeah. great. Uh, yeah. And it's uh, he takes on 10 men because they're like, because the whole setup is like, hey, uh, you can fight for food. Um, yeah, for a bag of rice. So there's these, yeah, for a bag of rice, and um, it man is just like, ah, this is, this is like slavery. So uh, fuck y'all, and he's like, so can you take three men? He's like, ten. I can take, I can eat fifty eggs, and the rules are out the window. So at this point, and this is what I love about the system, the fight becomes desperate and unnatural, and he does a bunch of other stuff like he uses sh- shutter speed. Yeah, and he breaks the one eighty yeah, yeah, line yeah. all the time, and he shows wides more often than any other fight. And it's like the system is out the window because everything is unnatural, and the feeling also it's black and white. The feeling behind the whole sequence is that none of this should be happening. There's no balance in this scene. It man is surrounded, so he's fighting left to the right, right to the left. There's just no no system. Other than, of course, the system that man wins. Um, and you can see it, see it on his face, right? He hates it. He's just unraveling these fools, but it's completely against his yeah, nature. He, so Wilson Yip 
just breaks it he's all. not a he's no longer fighting from the joy of kung fu which is what mm-hmm. it seemed like it was from before a kind of like yeah it's like an honorable system yeah. of self-education and self bet and, and like he loved betterment. it um, he loved it and like he loved being a teacher exactly yeah. well i think he also loved kung fu like i think he just, and he hates he abhors violence yes that's his other correct game. and so here he's sort of like fled into a different place where there's like actually latching out um, and I yeah. think you can argue that it's because he doesn't want to obey this system. This right left shit is nonsense to him now. Sure. Uh, but I think it's more that he's an animal. Uh, and this, because this is also the midpoint. And in these type stories, this is the all's lost point. In this case, he's given up hope that Kung Fu is even a teaching tool at all. He's just fighting for food at this point. He's abandoned all what he considers like his grace. So Wilson Yip says, fuck my systems for this one fight. And he does. And then we get the 10th fight. And this is where we get the build to our uh, climax. He also, and by, this is how- by the way, after that fight, goes home and says that he is like he's useless. He's, he's a useless person, yeah. which is an interesting right. takeaway because like, until you're really thinking about what the movie's about, it feels like, what do you mean useless? You just beat their ass, bro. You know, like, yeah, like you're- it seemed like on a surface reading, his emotions feel like out of whack with what happened. Uh, but mm-hmm. but and Donnie Yen is actually I think very. I good. agree. I <laughs> like, think he's quite good. He was in Rogue One. Yeah. Uh, if people yeah. remember that as the blind guy, uh, I like him in this role. I, he's he's a he's a non-conventional person to be in a role like this. I would say, uh, because he's like he's got kind of a warm, inviting sort of sweetness to him. <laughs> yeah, he's nice. Yeah, he's a nice yeah. guy. Exactly. Uh, anyway, I, like the, I'm mentioning it here because like you just said, like that's the all is lost moment of this film, which is unusual at the midpoint. Uh, and that's cool. And the movie has a narrative beat that is actually helping us understand what's really going on, which is like this man's sort of sense of well being and, and his like spirituality connected to his, uh, martial arts is gone. He sold it for food and for rage. Kind of interesting twist in it, too, I thought. Like, the story got really interesting here because it took some directions I didn't expect. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. this is a weird... It's it, This is what it's unexpected because it seems like it's moving away from the main function. Him right. and the general were just coming to a head, right? It and then he backs like off. Yeah. And he's now we get a montage where it man teaches a community how to defend themselves from other Chinese who prey on their weakness. Uh, which well, is, when again, you say other, you mean that same gang of bandits same, who have yeah, common as gang, dude. Who keeps still doing it? Yeah. Know? And so let's look at this yeah. story. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. this is a B story. So now we have shown that right is still dominant, but now who is actually the best is not represented by the right because this is a propagandist movie. This is trying to say China is the best. Um, sure. And I mean, all movies are pretty propaganda so, yeah yeah like, yeah, yeah. I'm I, not I, I'm, offended I don't mean this. that in the derogatory term yeah yeah, just, yeah yeah um so what we get in this is uh we get a b story we get a a, a bab we get left to right china who's now the established weak side is fighting back now and they fend them off so whereas it's never really happened before for the first time ever 10 fights in the movie the right side has become synonymous with the oppression, whereas before it was just power, right? And yeah. we get a we get left victories. So, and Ooh. I understand, and it's not. We get that A B switch. It man joins the fight as a part of B, and he fends them off. Then there's a beat where he becomes A a little bit and starts attacking from the right. And I think it's like you have this question in your mind, at, you know, in context with the previous one, where he's all over the place. Where it's like, is he going to punish these like hooligans, even though they're not the real threat? Is he going to go full like punch monster? And um, <laughs> I think that that's Wilson you playing with you. I think he's saying like, yeah, is he going to be a right dominant guy? Is right going to win? Is it is that my system is still? No, oh. we see growth. And the if you look at how it, the uh, fight is choreographed, they overnum they overnumber him again. 
And they now have sharp weapons, again, the symbol of like oppression, just like, you know, Japanese, or the Japanese in this movie are just oppression. Uh, so it man becomes, so he moves to the left. And so now we get a B he's left going right. And he's not going to join the new system of right dominance. He walks right up to it. But when lethal weapons are introduced, he just goes back to the left. He won't make the messy mistake of the ninth fight. He's not going to get at. He's seen how dark he can get. And these are like his countrymen, even though they've been led astray. He's like the subtext and the beats of the story are trying are telling you that he's going to stay with the weak side and do what he always does, which is just win games. He just wins games. So you see where this is going, which which is like be the best kung fu you've ever seen. Right. So it's we get so our good. left victory. Left is strong now. Left is yeah, yeah. left. Fuck yeah, left. Yeah. And left. we get the eleventh final fight. There's a bunch of well, actually, there's a bunch more story that happens. Point is, it man must fight the general. It's the last fight of the thing. And we get this what I think is everything's building up to this point. It's a beautiful like dance of the syntax I've been talking about. And this is where I think it's interesting. It man starts on the right. He does an offensive from A, then the mm -hmm. general comes back B. But this is also the longest fight in the game. So he's like giving us like appetizers at this point because it goes like A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. Right, because he can't dominate this guy the way he dominated everybody right, else. It's not really yeah. a movie. Yeah. And I think it's to build the expectation that Ip Man, with all, all that this general has done to him and his country, is just going to murder this fool. It's like if you ever had a case <laughs> to just be the right dominant side and just fucking pummel a dude, now is your time, right? In front of the country. So you're a bit scared he'll go full beast mode. And as awesome as it would be, it just wouldn't be Ip Man, right? you know? So what does he do? Ip Man has a flashback at a moment where he's beating uh, he's beating the general. Or it's like, it, they're vying for power, but he gets the upper hand. So it's like, right in the moment where it's like, Ip Man could just unhand this dude's ass to him. And we mm. cut to a single solitary moment of Zen for him where he's just taken back out of the politics of the moment. And he's just practicing Kung Fu back at home just against that little wooden you yeah, know, that's practice right. doll. Yeah. And so he just goes to work. And that's when we see it man goes to the left side. And if you remember, he doesn't, or if you watch the movie, uh, he, he doesn't become full beast mode. He just beats him. So, as one-sided as this fight becomes after the first few volleys where it man just destroys him, instead of crushing the general from the right, he crushes him from the left, and it becomes B all day, just left coming right until the end of the fight. China wins. The underdog story is complete. So basically, a system was built. The world was reversed and broken, and it man picks up the pieces and ignites a whole new system which is a synonymous with the whole nation's fury from the side that we perceived as weak from the beginning of the film. End of essay. It feels a little like he brought balance to the, mm -hmm. balance to the, the Kung Fu, mm -hmm. right? That's like right. I'm not being, I'm not being a dick, right? Like that feels like what is being said here. Yeah. And I want to say that like, when you watch the movie, there's a lot of little tiny bits. Like sometimes in fights, there's a back and forth. And you'll, you can kind of track like, oh, that's a little bit of A, that's a little bit of B. So if you were to write it down, it would look like A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, or something like that. I mean, they're not that long fights. They're like two minutes at the like, longest. But screen direction flips because someone does like a reverse or there's a vibe for power. He does that a lot because that makes a good martial arts fight. But when you pause the movie and ask yourself, who's winning right now? Uh, the times it's most clear are a series of successful attacks from one side. So if you look at all of the fights in like a Cliff Notes way, you can really distill it down to ABA or BAB. Um, and I just kind of left it out because those things were mostly done to keep the fights interesting and longer. Um, but I wanted to give that caveat because someone's going to watch this and, you know, put, put my, uh, you know, words to the pen and uh, I'm, I mean, you know, <laughs> someone's going to do this. Someone's, someone's going to do... write it all or down. not or not. But they could. Yeah, yeah. And look, I have they a paper could. in my file cabinet that says I'm a master of film. <laughs> Sifu of rhythm. I'm yeah. a film master. So if anyone wants to disagree with me, remember that <laughs> they're picking a fight with a master. And so they're going to lose. I'm basically hope, a man. Uh, hope you're ready for 18 chest punches in a row that you can't. Right. Because that's coming. Right. Um. So I, I kind of, it's, I don't know if 
does is was I clear? Because I feel like I want to yes, run dude. through the system. No, this was. I honestly, I'm like kind of impressed, and, and I say that like we're always impressed, right? Like we're like I always like the argument. This one really impresses me because I could never have seen it. Like I would never like th- this would never have occurred to me, and I find it so smart and uh, beautiful. And I know, assuming that your research is right, which I do. Uh, I know that it could not have happened by accident. Like I know the director was doing exactly what you said. Right, they had uh, to, because otherwise is really it wouldn't be cool. as perfect, and it wouldn't it wouldn't follow the story as perfectly. It's so funny because every time you break down like a director's techniques, they're ultimately like pretty simple. Uh huh. You know what I mean? Like the things that directors do to like convey meaning are almost always like pretty simple. Like yeah. this guy's bigger than that guy, so you listen to him more. Or like this guy's coming from this direction and now he's coming from that direction. So you feel mm-hmm. like a change has happened. You know what I mean? Like they're all very simple, totally. but they work. They're very effective. I think they do. And it's like, because here's the thing is they're going to do the fight anyway. They, the fight's going to be awesome. They know what their job is. They're making a movie where they're like, the whole point people are coming to this is fights, right? But they also want an emotional like arc. And they're when it's just like, is it left versus right or is right versus left? Where's the momentum going? Where's the, is that dolly moving back? Is it moving forward? These are like incidental, you know, there's choices that it's like, yeah, I could see it that way. I could see it that way. And building a system is like a really easy way to be like, I had intention and that's what this means. So I, anytime in the clutter of all the decisions that all of the, you know, department heads have to make in the making of a film, they can just go back to the system and go like, this is what we did last time. This is where this, this is how it's different now because like they're the heroes on this part of their story. How is that? How would that be replicated in the simple, like sticks and stones, you know, with the simplest uh, things, right and left, you know, up and right. down diagonal or not, you know, it's, it's well, these, uh, uh, a lot of times with directing, ultimately, like you're coming down on a binary of contrasts. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. and the reason for that is because it's the simplest way that you can evoke Contrast. a sense of change. Yeah. yeah. So, like, you you really do end up sort of defining things in these more broad, like, okay, they come from the right, they come from the left, they come from the right and the left. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, uh, that that stuff just sort of triggers in our lizard brain. You know, that likes yeah. to sort of categorize things in, in binaries, even if not everything is binary, obviously. Right. And I think that if you don't rely on screen direction, so if you don't build a system where geography is complete, you you jump the 180 line all the time or like the shield just a few times. Like the yeah. shield. Uh, a and B, in terms of the, you know, what we've been talking about needs to be something you can wrap your brain around. Otherwise you kind of, it's nonsense. There is no a or B because they're not really definable. So it's, and that's what I would say is like most of the forgettable action sequences that we see where it just goes cut, 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 cut because the shots over here now, and a cut is a great, brilliant way. Camera movement is a great, brilliant way to uh, keep momentum flowing um, cutting on action is a term that editors you will use because it's like it looks smooth so you can smooth out and make the thing look better but that that it has no intention right it's not like I want to do it this way so it just it's, becomes the yeah. shots over here now it's over here it's not nonsense. Unless it's planned it's not, not unless it's planned to be that yeah right? and that's yeah. what you need to do in order to create screen craft and you just hit like with a barrage of shots. Uh, and that pull you in different directions with band and it and it, like the like red notice <laughs> uh, right so yeah <laughs> like that that's why screen direction and all that's why the rules and the conventions are kind of there you play with them if you want to play with them and break them in your movie jump the 1a line but do it in a moment that kind of matters right so the audience knows is with you and is like, oh, you know, or don't. Maybe your whole point is fuck it all, fuck all systems, and it's an anarchy movie. In that case, that would be then cool to will... see a non-conventional movie in that way. And you do I mean, see those. Yeah, I think again, The Shield is a is a show that is generally trying to resist the traditional film conventions. Uh, it, but it ends up making a convention, like it ends up creating a language that's pretty recognizable. Because uh, that's what you have to do, because people still need to understand the actual events of the story. You know, 
and That's these rules right. exist mostly to communicate events. Mm-hmm. You know, meaning is for is for the the directors who ha- want to say more than just the events of the plot. You know. That's right. I like it when form meets function, right? Function in this case meaning like the plot, like the operations of the story. And, and the form, actual fighting. The actual fighting and the fight. itself. Yeah. yeah, the fighting is awesome. So you that's why you're there. That's So when the form replicates it and moves with it as a story, when they care for each other and they do a little dance, I don't know, I like form. I'm a, I'm like a formy. You're a formy. You're a form boy. Yeah. And when you do it right, it does two things. It makes the audience can consciously or unconsciously feel like something is going well or going or not going well, or this is home or this is, I'm very far away from home. And two, it makes me write self-indulgent essays about it. So I thought this was good. Me. That's, that's me. I thought this was good. Honestly, I really thought this was good. Thanks, man. Uh, Thanks, man. Sorry. It was an essay and I, not at all. No, no, no. I, I, I think you had a lot of good stuff to say here. And also like, again, I just don't, I don't think like knowing how to direct fight scenes just a little bit, you know, like I've done a little bit of fight scenes as have you, uh, they require such meticulous balance and also choreographing between so many different people. Like not just the, not just the cinematographer and the actors and you, but also a, a stunt coordinator and, you know, like art department and sometimes like blood and special effects. And like, there's a lot of people involved in a, in a fight. Uh, so like, I think the temptation to kind of, you know, just let him go at it and sort of shotgun blast mm-hmm. the, the action. You see a lot of movies give in to that. Yeah. Maybe because um, of time or whatever, but you know, the really great Kung Fu movies are, are delicately crafted like this one. They're so good. And yeah, even for, uh, lower budget filmmakers, you know, uh, I remember when we were out in Idlewild and we, we shot, I shot adventures in Jedi school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and there's a big fight between Katie Stoll and Michael Swaim in that they're like they they have a electrical fight or whatever they have force lightning fight, and I had developed Classic. a system where I was like as the slowly over time it resets every time someone takes over, uh, but slowly over time to kind of build up Katie's crescendo of like moment where she like really takes over, uh, I got more narrow to the eye line. As we went, oh, and it was like there was a clear indication. I won't say who was blowing up my spot. One of the department heads uh, that deals with time was like, "We're <laughs> running out of time," and <laughs> and they were like, you, "The All camera's right. fine right here. You can shoot the camera. Like, do you have to move it like five feet for this one little bit?" I was like, what, what are we doing here? We're doing a fight scene, man. Yeah, you know? I mean, and yeah, I was and so pissed. We, but we both know why. I mean, but, that's the thing, yeah, right? That's, the that's job. what happens. Sometimes if we didn't plan well, like it's on all of us. It's or on it just the didn't production. happen. You know, like, yeah. That, that, I, I cut shots like that before, and I've been like, yeah, my system that was, I, and I watch it and I hate it. I watch a mo- like a, a sketch because it's comedy, and in the end, really all you have to do is just show the faces saying the funny line. It's for jokes. Um, yeah, yeah. But like sometimes you get to play because you want to build a, a thing. And so when you do that, you'd be like, all right, and that's always the first shit to go because it always takes the most time. And uh, and so I always love it when I see like, oh, you know what? In the edit, when I'm looking back at it, I was building that system. That system is built and then it went away, <laughs> you know, and it's just because we didn't have time on that day. So it didn't complete and well, you don't really notice it because it's all because it, it was nah. designed to be as transparent as possible because it's small stake stuff like getting more narrow to the eye line. Like who really notices that shit? But, but it was you... a fun little game that I could do. You would feel it if it you worked would. and you executed it. That's really what a great director does. And also, I think the situation you. you just <laughs> described... No, you're right. And uh, I think the situation you just described <laughs> is why so many fight scenes do end up feeling sort of like haphazard shotgun blasts. Is right. because somebody who's keeping track of time is like, dude, you, we just don't have time to do this slick-ass thing you want to do. Uh, you know, I think that's why some directors kind of punt on cool fight scenes. Like again, uh, yeah. Chris Chris Nolan punts on cool fights often. 
And then he does a set piece fight scene, and that's the one you remember, and you go, yeah. awesome. Yeah, that one but, was awesome. Yeah, but the actual and that's, fighting that's, like, eh. And that's what, uh, that's kind of corporate filmmaking and yeah. our tour filmmaking kind of coming together and shaking hands and saying, here's a compromise. I think when you go to a movie like It Man, a lot of martial arts, it's so beloved that they plan in advance and they're like, this fight scene's going to take seven days to shoot. That's, you what, know, that's what it is. no way around it. So yeah. like a Jackie Chan, I mean, and this is also, this is not new. We're not doing new territory here. This was explored uh, in that uh, every frame of painting video, but like the great Jackie Chan movies, what sets them apart is that he has the time to do it 150 times. Like if he, yeah. if he like, and the, and the, the production company knows we're going to do it till he gets it right. Till he gets it perfect. Mm-hmm. We're going to do it over and over. And like American films, Unless your name is Stanley Kubrick, you really can't. You know, like they they just don't have the budget for that. And the uh, tendency these days seems to be with corporate filmmaking, what it is seems to be less. This stuff falls to the wayside. And arguably, for a, I think how is convention built? I would argue by the repetition of seeing things. Um, that's true. Yeah, it's I just think what that I've seen. A lot of people are like, "What's a fight scene?" Well, you know. Endgame, you know, that's a pretty awesome one, and they're not wrong because they actually did that one pretty damn well. That's like but that fifteen is fight all scenes. over the place. Has no con, no, there's no convention. It's just a series of cool looking shots, and it's very cool. I think. I mean, uh, this is me becoming old, literally in front I'm of your so ears. So excited! I love uh, it. Like I'm just like uh, when I see that, I go. We are teaching people to not use their eyes as nimbly as we have in the past. And I think that's sad. That's all. <laughs> Can I just put it on the record that I'm sad? I w- uh, <laughs> duly noted. I would say it's it's maybe like another way to think of it is that like we're taking away this like sort of higher level palette of filmmaking so that people are consuming something that's a little bit more mass produced. Like this is too dramatic of a contrast, but it's right. the equivalent of like, you know, you went from like, uh, like an artisan, you know, French restaurant to like uh, Chipotle, you know what I mean? Like not that, not that bad, obviously, but like, <laughs> but like that. That's the contrast. It's like they both eat, man. They'll both like you'll you'll eat it. That's the thing, and I think I'll, I'll pull my previous statement back a little bit because it's also like people are just interested in different things, you know. Like sometimes the CG, like fucking impressive CG mind fuck that is some of these movies that's enough for the price of admission. And sometimes people are like, that's why I go is because look at those colors. Look at that ship, you know? But I guess all I mean to say is when we talk about the stuff where it's like, how, how, like, how does, how does Avengers Endgame build up the emotion of Tony Stark dying? Uh, Spoilers to the biggest movie of all time. You had four years. Um, you uh, know, like that I would to say me, they do that actually pretty well because they knew yeah. it's precious. They knew it's precious. They also had 85 films to they build so it up. many movies to do it. It's but like I think it's it's because they cared about that. So they put time sure, and attention sure. and you notice that the camera and all those that stuff is perfect because they know that it, it, it matters. And so in a martial arts film, fighting matters. And uh, so they, they find that is precious. It's just wherever your passion lies, really, because I can't dog on anyone for saying, like, I'm in it because the costumes fucking rule. I'm like, that's a way to watch a movie. I think a lot of people, uh, there, there's more people doing that than I would care to believe. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, I, that, like the response that, for instance, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood got really showed mm-hmm. me, oh, there's a lot of people watching movies not for story. Uh, yeah. Not because not yeah. that movie's bad or it doesn't have a story, just because I I feel like the story is actually kind of secondary to all the other aspects of the film. You know, like so, sort of like right. the pastiche and like the 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 era style. and like I mean, style. it's a Tarantino film. It's style. Yeah, like, I mean, he, which is funny because he's a screenwriter. Story. Uh, yeah, but but yeah, like the way people talked about that film too it was like they were really just sort of soaking in all the ancillary stuff to the story. Um, so yeah, you're right. That's a thing, and uh, you know, if that's how you like movies, I understand. I would think yeah. though that that would mean you would want movies to be more like this, 
and less like uh, what I've called Chipotle, although Chipotle mm-hmm. is a is a wonderful restaurant, and if they'd care yeah. to sponsor director piece, if, if you want to sponsor, I, love I would be the happy beans to eat a burrito bowl, Mm-mm, beans, mm, director um, bowl. We maybe we, maybe there. Hey, Chipotle, maybe small beans. There's something in that. Is yeah. what I'm saying. Get a bowl so full of theory. We can work together. We're little, two very strong brands yeah. on the internet. <laughs> so when I said uh, artisan French movie, that was yeah. the bad thing. <laughs> that was the bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm also man uh, like this writing this and like just talking about this has really come at a time where I'm trying to do this thing because I because oh, of the thing the that thing. we're trying to do this thing in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> where as a as you know as a master of film, I'm gonna <laughs> use that all the right. time, now. <laughs> all the fucking time. Uh, where I I talk about film a lot and I uh, you know I watch a lot of films. <laughs> uh, when I'm talking about it, I do this thing a lot where I don't necessarily talk about how good is this movie at doing what it's trying to do versus what I want it to do. It man happens to be a movie that they're the same thing. They overlap for you. They're doing the right thing. And you know, you know, I'm not a huge fan of a lot of corporate filmmaking these days. Um, what I want it to do is cherish uh, some of these techniques to make me feel something by putting an image on a screen to make me feel it, not infer its feeling. Um, but that is what I want it to do. And I should really take things at the f- face value of is the good, the movie good at doing what it's trying to do and identifying what that is. So I actually think that I kind of want to end that in humbleness. You know, I want to say yeah. like, uh, I kind of fucked up. <laughs> no, no, no. I think that actually takes uh, more work to get good at that skill set than to accurately or intelligently diagnose what would make it a good movie. Right, like, and, I agree. And I actually think accurately, intelligently diagnosing also takes a lot of work. I don't think that's a thing where just any old asshole can just come up here with six Put shooter a blazer and pulse, make yeah. good points. That's not, I mean, I think that also is not true. But being able to understand what a movie wants to be and guide it in that direction, like to me, that's, that's a gift. It is a gift. That's what I think a great studio head probably can do, and like a great producer can probably do. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah, that's true. That's that part of what those true. roles are. It's big um, picture shit, and it's um because it's always it's about the holistic view, right? It's about what is the whole question itself is what matters, you know? Well, also like uh. As a filmmaker, you're also in a community of filmmakers, right? Um, which means often you're going to get asked to function in what is the equivalent of a producer slash studio head role for your friends. And what I mean is, like, give me notes on this script, come watch my feature cut, come, you know, what I mean, like, be involved as a sort of loose set of eyes. And yeah. if you don't show up there able to understand what the thing wants to be. You're going to really disappoint and potentially like hurt the Mm -hmm. film that you're interacting with and the filmmaker because it's an intimate process. You know, like it takes a lot of trust to Mm -hmm. extend I just did that to you. To you, how to how to how to go? I think you did great. I actually, oh, okay. Yeah, I I really liked your notes a lot. You just. Cause that it's and you also fucked up. No, no, no. It was dude, great. It's on the other side though, because sometimes when you so, you you find these things so precious, it's a, a whole nother skill to be on the other side of that, where you're just like, this guy just wants it to be what he wants it to be. That's he doesn't see the movie. Um, that that happens. That is a distraction from taking notes and should be out outed and thrown out the building. No, just I thought you had. Yeah. Uh, I thought there were like four things that were really strong uh, yeah. major observations that I like. Yep, he's right about that. Uh, yeah. Also, your compliments meant a lot. So, no, man, you were right on. Thank you. Thank you. You're right I on. Love, I love uh, working on ideas with you. Same, buddy. It's so important to work with a, to work with someone who is like ideas king, right? Like what's what are we doing here? Yeah, let's have a meeting. It's time for business meeting. All right, what are we doing here? <laughs> you know, you were, like you were talking about, uh, you were talking about cutting uh, stuff that you liked that was sort of to to enhance 
uh, the finished product, but at the end of the day, like we're just shooting jokes on faces. Yeah, uh, I remember very vividly, and I don't think Cody will mind if I share this. Uh, this was early in my tenure at Cracked. I made a video with him called Slorp, and uh, so Slorp involved like casting kids. I think you were you you were the DP of that, it. right? Yeah, I yeah, shot yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we all worked on that. Because that was going to be fun, because I, I could mimic a 90s commercial. That's so right. Yeah, like, so you and I got really invested in that, in like, how mm-hmm. can we make the 90s commercial? Like, we watched some gag commercials and all this stuff, and uh, did a pretty good job imitating it, I would say. And mm-hmm. so, like, in the first cut, you know, I just had a bunch more commercial shit in there, and Cody, in his gentle Cody way, said, uh, I, don't, I think we should just cut all this stuff because it's not the jokes. And I was like, bro. No, man. Like I like I just made this yeah. fucking thing. It's going in the movie. And he's like, I don't know how to tell you this, man, but here the joke is king. Like that's like that's a direct yeah. quote. And uh That's he's right. He was right. Yeah, yeah. He was absolutely right. Uh I was mad for about an hour and a half about that. Mm-hmm. Uh mm-hmm. in private, because I know how to be mad in private. So it's a good I, story. I did. Yeah, it's a yeah, good story. Yeah. And I was like, I had to really think about it. I was like, and I sent him an email. It's like, excuse me, you don't get to define what the joke is. That was like going to be my response to that. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> you know? a, it's such a fucking uh, Adam answer. It's just into the uh, mind of Adam. I yeah, love exactly. this because it's like, because I always know at the end of that tale, the end of that statement is some time and then I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do. Yeah. Yeah. I always yeah. contemplate the worst idea first and then like uh, grow it's up so a little bit. No, but I, I think it. he was right. And honestly, I think him telling me that was kind of a big favor. Like it wasn't just a selfish thing for his version of the movie. It was a big favor because like it's a reminder and I needed it early at correct. And I, I, it's good for the whole career to remember like, look, you got to deliver on the baseline level first of like basic entertainment and clarity. If you don't deliver on those two things, then who cares about your awesome GAC uh, shots? Yeah. Who exactly. cares about your late nineties reference that is like super accurate and boy, did you do it? Nobody fucking cares. You know, I remember, um, uh, and I don't even think Swain will remember this. Maybe will because maybe he was quoting something. But he, I remember early in our collaboration, and so we're talking like 2007. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I remember he, we were talking about, we were like writing at the time because we wrote for a newspaper, like a, a satire publication, because th- you could throw a fucking rock and hit one of those back then, <laughs> uh, and. Um, I remember he, he just, I don't remember what we were talking about, but he said, he just had this line where he was just like, be clear first, then be elegant. Yeah. And that's, I was like, that's pretty mm, good. Mm, that's, that's pretty right. tasty. Yeah. That's tasty right there. Yeah. And I'm like, that's how all things should funnel. That's you slick. Know? That's yeah, pretty he's good. slick with words. He's so a I wordsmith. don't know if that's a Swaim original or if that's a. He's just like, yeah, that's fucking Wordsworth. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that shit's in Keating. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it's in Keating, motherfucker. (laughs) So so he's a he's just a hooligan with a big vocabulary. Ever read Homer, motherfucker? (laughs) Yeah, motherfucker, I'm Word Man. Word Man. Yeah, it's swing for you. Uh, Yeah, very one sided relationship. But I mean, that's what's so fun about collaborating with our friends who are good writers. And this is not intended to be. Uh, a big like we're all the best but like uh, you're talking about collaborating with your friend well yeah man like at the end of the day uh we all have to sort of be passionate about achieving elegance because that's the art form that we subscribe to and that we slave for you know and Uh uh sweat and bleed for and everything but also like have the kind of objectivity that a producer or a studio head would have which is About like how it's going to be perceived first it's clarity and how it's perceived and uh people don't show up with notes to hurt you man you know what i mean yeah. like they're, they're here they because don't. that's their honest impression so like deal with it <laughs> uh you know that's yeah. right that's right that's right so i like it i like this podcast i like it too i, I got to be indulgent and then i got to, you know and then i got to act humble in front of everyone which is more points then I so like many a, points. And then I learned something. Yeah. And uh, that makes me so like three wins. You know, then, it's kind of like <laughs> it, man. And we, then we went on a journey to friend town uh, and we, we both got elected town. mayor. I re- I just realized that this podcast was for me and for no one else. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I'm yep, going to keep yep. it in my treasury. It's, it's all cataloging now in my brain, and I don't feel sorry about it. <laughs> so uh, thanks to Abe later, who listened to it when he was older on his deathbed. Yeah. <laughs> this is a good podcast. Uh, hope you all enjoyed this uh, wonderful trip uh, down the down the annals of Eat Men. And uh, the the excellent presentation our our esteemed colleague Abe has presented. And uh, if you liked this, oh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, haven't liked and subscribed uh, the Small Beans feed or thrown a couple bucks in the Patreon, hey bro, we'd love to have it. We're so grateful you're yeah. here. Uh, we got tons of other shows. Feel free to give them a look see. And we'll see you on the other side of the Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> This has been a Small Beans Endeavor. We're a bunch of pals who make podcasts, sketches, music, web series, and movies. The beans always have new ideas percolating, so make sure to check us out at patreon.com slash smallbeans. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash smallbeans, where you can browse all of our current and past content, see what we've got planned in the future, and learn how your support can help the small beans grow into huge, giant monster beans. If you enjoyed this content module, please like, rate, subscribe, or tell a friend about us. We love you!